He bravely stood up uh, to the corruption, the violence, and the, the, all, the, all the bad things that the Putin government was doing. In response, Putin had him poisoned. He had him arrested. He had him prosecuted for fabricated crimes. He sentenced him to prison. He was held in isolation. Even all that didn't stop him from calling out Putin's lies. Even in prison, he was a powerful voice for the truth, which is kind of amazing when you think about it. And he could have lived safely in exile after the assassination attempt on him in 2020, which nearly killed him, I might add. And but he uh, he was traveling outside the country at the time. Instead, he returned to Russia. He returned to Russia, knowing he'd likely be imprisoned or even killed if he continued his work. But he did it anyway because he believed so deeply in his country, in Russia. Reports of his death, if they're true, and I have no reason to believe it or not, Russian authorities are going to tell their own story. But make no mistake, make no mistake, Putin is responsible for Navalny's death. Putin is responsible. What has happened to Navalny is yet more proof of Putin's brutality. No one should be fooled, not in Russia, not at home, not anywhere in the world. Putin does not only target his citizens of other countries, as we've seen in what's going on in Ukraine right now. He also inflicts terrible crimes on his own people. And his people across Russia and around the world are mourning Navalny today because he was so many things that Putin was not. He was brave. He was principled. He was dedicated to building a Russia where the rule of law existed and where it applied to everybody. Navalny believed in that Russia, that Russia. He knew it was a cause worth fighting for, and obviously even dying for. This tragedy reminds us of the stakes of this moment. We had to provide the funding so Ukraine can keep defending itself against Putin's vicious onslaughts and war crimes. You know, there was a bipartisan Senate vote that passed overwhelmingly in the United States Senate to fund Ukraine. Now, as I've said before, and I mean this in a literal sense, history is watching. History is watching the House of Representatives. The failure to support Ukraine at this critical moment will never be forgotten. It's going to go down on the pages of history. It really is. It's consequential. And the clock is ticking. And this has to happen. We have to help now. You know, we have to realize what we're dealing with with Putin. All of us should reject the dangerous statements made by the previous president that invited Russia to invade our NATO allies if they weren't paying up. He said if an ally did not pay their dues, he'd encourage Russia to, quote, do whatever the hell they want. I, I guess I should clear my mind here a little bit and not say what I'm really thinking. But let me be clear. This is an outrageous thing for a president to say. I can't fathom. I can't fathom. From Truman on, they're rolling over in their graves here.